Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks, and this is part one in a multiple part series. Several viewers have recently asked me for tips in freezing in place the top row or multiple rows. They want to be able to see the information in the top row or multiple rows as they scroll vertically down in their Excel worksheet. Likewise, they might want to freeze in place the leftmost column or multiple columns to the left as they scroll horizontally across in an Excel worksheet. All of the commands that I'm going to be using in this lesson are found on the View tab of the ribbon in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. Let's begin by using one of the commands from the View tab of the ribbon to switch to another Excel workbook. So over here with switch windows, notice that there is a drop down arrow. Now I can see the workbooks that I have open during the session. In this case, I have two open workbooks, but the checkbox is notifying me that this is the active workbook. So the checkbox indicates the workbook that is active. When I want to switch to another open workbook and make that the active workbook, then I just click on the workbook that I wish to make active. Now we're going to be using this worksheet to freeze the labels up here in the top row to freeze the labels and the information that is in the leftmost column. Now this is a large workbook. How large? If I use the keyboard shortcut Control plus End, it's going to take me down to the last row that has data. In this case, row 1969. But notice that the labels up in the top row are no longer visible. So I really don't know how this data is related to the information or the categories in the workbook. I want to be able to freeze the labels in the top row. So select a cell, any cell. It does not matter for freezing the top row. View tab of the ribbon and over here in freeze panes, again, pay attention that there are drop down menu choices. Freezing the panes, freezing the top row, which is what I'm going to do, or freezing the first column. So remember I had selected any random cell and now when I want to freeze the top row, Notice that there is a line underneath the labels in the top row. And when I use the page down command, the labels in the top row remain visible. Use the control end to take me down to the last cell in this worksheet that has data, and the labels in the top row remain visible. Control home takes me back up to the top of the worksheet. Now, when I no longer need to freeze the panes, come back here, freeze panes, and notice that there is an unfreeze panes command. Now, in this part, I want to be able to freeze the information in the leftmost column. Again, it doesn't matter which cell you select. Select any random cell. View tab of the ribbon, freeze panes drop-down menu, and we want to freeze the first column. So now notice the vertical line that appears directly to the right of the information in column A, the leftmost column, the first column. So now as I scroll across, that information remains on view. Control Home brings me back. And once again, I can go back here and unfreeze that, freeze panes and unfreeze the panes. Now, what if I want to be able to freeze both labels in columns and labels in rows. Now, many people will mistakenly just say, well, it was okay to select a random cell when Danny showed me how to freeze the top row, select a random cell when Danny showed me how to freeze the left column. But look what's going to happen when I go to the View tab of the ribbon and choose to freeze the panes. I have a vertical line, I have a horizontal line, okay, but notice where they appear. When you freeze the panes, the rows will be frozen beginning by the row directly above the active cell. So in this case, I'm going to have eight rows that are going to remain frozen when I use page down. 
You see, I have eight rows that remain in place. And maybe that wasn't what I intended. So I'm going to go back and show you. And also notice, and I'll use Control Home to bring me up to the top. This was my active cell when I said go in and freeze the panes. So now the columns, one, two, three, four columns, are going to be frozen in place as I scroll across because it's going to freeze all of the columns directly to the left of your active cell when you choose freeze panes. It's going to freeze all of the information in all of the rows directly above the cell that was active. So most people want to be able to freeze just the top row and the left column or the first column. So let me show you how to do that. Let's come back here and unfreeze the panes. Now in this case I want to make sure that I have cell B2 selected as the active cell. I want to be able to freeze the information of the rows directly above the cell and directly to the left in the column. So now when I come back and say freeze panes I get exactly what I was intending. Now as I use page down, notice the top row is frozen in place. Scroll across horizontally and the first column remains frozen in place. So while it doesn't matter which cell you select when you want to freeze the top row, when you want to freeze the first column, it makes a major difference that you select the cell when you want to freeze the panes. So the freezing the panes is going to put two freeze areas in for the rows directly above the active cell directly to the left of that active cell. Alright, now what if you'd like to have multiple rows in view? You're not going to get it by using the freeze panes. Instead, let me introduce you to the split bars that we can use. So in this case, I want to be able to have uh, four rows remain visible as I scroll down. So in this case, select the row where you want to create that split. And then come over here and use the split. So now we have four rows above, and I was over here in, in, in column B, and I have one column. So now, notice that when I scroll down, and I'll use page down, those four rows remain in place. So from the active uh, position, and I use the split, it puts in a vertical split and a horizontal split. Now, what if it isn't exactly where I want it? I really want to have now five rows in place. So let's come back over here, Control Home. Very, very simple. Notice that when I move the mouse over here, you see how it changes from the white cross into the double uh, vertical arrows. All you have to do is just click on that split and then position it where you wish. Likewise, you could come over here and position it where you wish. If you don't want to have, in this case, freezing the columns, this is so simple to remove it. All you have to do, move over here on to the split, double click it, and it disappears. Now notice the beauty over here is that we actually have two vertical scrolls. So I can scroll the upper portion above the split and I can also use the navigational um, uh, pane over here to scroll vertically for the area below the split. And remember I can adjust it anywhere I want. Move it up so that there is less frozen in place or that there is more frozen in place. Just click and then drag. And when I want to remove it, it's very simple. I could either come back here and uncheck the split. Notice that this is a toggle, or I can simply double click. Now, another way that we can bring in either of the vertical or the horizontal split bars is come over here and notice over here to the right, or the upper right corner, There's and there's no indication, but notice that the icon changes the way we had it when we were moving it. So you see now that I have the horizontal split bar. So you see it was up here for the horizontal split bar, and when I want to remove it, I'll just double click it. Here it is over here. Just drag it down. To make the vertical split bar, it's down here in the lower right corner. And again, just drag it over. So in this case, notice that what we have, we have two horizontal scroll areas. Here is the first one, and here is the second one to scroll. We also have 
two vertical scrolls. So we have a scroll for the area above the uh, vertical split or the horizontal split and we have a directional for the below the split. And again you can either move them by just dragging them and dropping them, drag and drop, or when you want to remove one just double click and it's removed. Double click and it's removed or click to split. So there you've seen some terrific uh, tricks for keeping in place selected panes, columns or rows. I showed you first how to use the freeze panes and then the split using the commands in the split, which will again be based upon where your active cell was. If you're not happy with it, you can just simply drag it over. If you want to remove one, just double click. If you want to remove it, you can also click the split. Now, both the freeze panes and the split command are specific to a worksheet. So these commands will not work on another worksheet. You have to implement them worksheet by worksheet. In other words, they're worksheet level commands. Now, in the next lesson, I'll go in and I'll show you how we can take advantage of Excel 2007, Excel 2010 tables for managing our splits and our panes. And just as I conclude the lesson, I invite you to visit my online shopping center. And if you like these tips, I have 50 tips that are just like this on my DVD-ROM, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007 which includes the practice worksheets that accompany each of the lessons. And I'll look for you in the next part of this series.